God gave you a talent. God gave you a gift. Use it to his glory. Use it to his honor. Because if you use it right, God will take from those who have and put it in your hand. I want to talk tonight from this subject. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? This pericope, this portion of this one parable in three movements. In the first parable of these three movements of the parables of the kingdom, Jesus is talking about some wise and foolish virgins. And then in the third parable, he's, he's talking about some sheep and goats. Uh, when the master comes, he will separate the sheep from the goats and one will be on the left hand and the other on the right hand and he will say certain things to the ones on the left and to the ones on the right. And then in this second parable, he talks about a man traveling into a far country. The kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants. Uh, his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. He, he, did not, he did not trust his money to an investment house. He did not trust his money to a brokerage firm. He called his own servants, which means or which meant he trusted them. He trusted these servants with an exorbitant amount of money. Now, a talent uh, in Bible times, in the scriptures, a talent is equivalent to 15 years wages. So for one man to be given five talents is to be given five times 15, five, five, 75, I think it is. Years, wages, and an exaggerated amount of money. And the man who had two talents had an exorbitant amount of money. Even the man with one talent had an extraordinary amount of money. Now, we, we, we allegorize this text and make the talents to mean gifts, and, and that's all right if you want to use it that way. We can still use it that way. But in the scriptures, it's talking about weights and measures. It talking, it's talking about money, uh, an extremely large amount of money. And he did not trust it to a brokerage firm. He did not trust it to an investment house. Uh, he didn't give it to uh, Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. He didn't give it to J.P. Morgan Chase. He called his own servants because he put his trust in them. And the Bible says straightway he took his journey. And straightway for the man is also straightway for the servants. Because as soon as he left, they left. And they got about, two of them, their industry. The one who had five talents went and worked hard and brought back 100% return on his Lord's investment. When the Lord came back, he, he had a time to reckon with them. He had a season to, to give an account of their stewardship. Because the money was not theirs. 
the talents did not belong to them. It belonged to their master, but while it was in their care, it was their responsibility to be diligent and industrious in its growth. And so when the Lord comes back, there's a day of reckoning. And brothers and sisters, hear me tonight. When the Lord Jesus comes again, there will be a day of reckoning. We are going to have to give an account of our stewardship. He called them to account. And the one who had five talents came and said, Master, lo, you have given me five talents, and here I have gained five talents other than what you gave me. His master said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over these few things. I will make you ruler over many. Enter now into your master's joy. The one who had two talents came and said, Master, you gave me two, and I got two more besides what you gave me. And the master says, the same thing to the one who had five. Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into thy master's joy. Now, the one who had two was not envious against the one who had five. Because neither one of them deserved any. Because all of it belonged to the master. I wish I had somebody to help me preach. That's why you ought not look out of your eyes with, envious, with, with envy at what God is doing in somebody else's life. God blesses us according to our ability to handle it. Uh, some folk are five talent people. Some folk are just two talent people. But work with what you have. Thank God for what you have. Now listen, it does not have to be the best. Just make sure it's your best. And when you do your best, when the Lord comes again, when the day of reckoning comes, you'll hear him say, well done. Now the one who had one talent, went and hid his Lord's money in the ground. And when the Lord came to reckon with him, he said, I knew you. I know what kind of man you are. You are a hard man. You reap where you have not sown. You gather where you have not even scattered seed. And, and I knew you were a difficult person to deal with. He, he said, I, I would have done more but I was afraid. I, I would have given it my best effort, but I didn't think you would notice. So at least I didn't lose what you gave me. I hid it. And the master says to him, you wicked, slothful, Lazy, unindustrious, no good, wicked servant. You knew who I was before I left. And if you were not going to do anything with what I gave you, you should have at least given it to the exchangers so that I could get some simple interest on it. You see, I'll tell you what I want to do. Take the one talent from the man who hid it and give it to the one who has 10. Because to the one who has what I gave him and does not use it, I'm going to give it to somebody who got sense enough to know what to do with it. And then take him and cast him in the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I want you to get this before I make my little points. He gave one five talents because he had the ability to handle them. He gave one two talents because that's all he could handle. He gave another one talent because he knew he was not a five talent person. 
so he would not put on him any more than he was able to handle. That's merciful of the master not to put in his hands what he know he can't handle. Now check this out. God does not give anything everything. But he does give everything something. I wish I had my 730 cry. If my 730 gang was here, they'd be running all over this place. He does not give anything everything, but he does give everything something. Let me see if I can paint this picture for you. Let me see if I can make this make sense. The most beautiful bird God ever created is a peacock. When that peacock opens that tail and, and spreads those feathers, there is no sight more glorious than that of a peacock because it's a beautiful bird. But look at its feet. It has the ugliest feet of any creature God ever created. Not only does it have ugly feet, but it can't fly. Now, an eagle does not look anything like a peacock. But from two miles in the sky, he can spy a rat crawling on the ground and look in direct sunlight and never blink his eye. God does not ever give anything everything, but he gives everything something. Which means Carlos don't have to preach like Terry. Busby don't have to pray like Robinson. God does not give anything, everything, but he gives everything something. And the something God gives you, if nobody appreciates it, use it. If they like you, if they don't like you, if they're on your side, if they're not on your side, if they compliment you, if they criticize you, God gave it to me. Um, so since God gave it to me what are you afraid of I wish I had a witness uh, some folk brothers and sisters are scared, afraid frightened, terrified of the past Because tonight, if the truth were known, every one of us in here lives in a haunted house. There are some ghosts from our past that we are ashamed to talk about. Have I got a witness here? There are some skeletons, some bones in our closets that we try all we know to keep hidden because we got a Sunday face and a Monday face. I wish I had somebody to help me. We shout and cut up here on Sunday, but follow us home. And, and, and we do everything we can to press our shoulder against that closet door to keep the past from coming out. Uh, but if you're afraid of your past, the Bible has a word for that. The book of Colossians says he took our sins and nailed the cross. Have I got a witness here? 
So whatever surfaces from the past to embarrass us, Jesus said, I paid for that. Whatever comes out on us that everybody at the church don't know, that's all right. Jesus said, I took care of that. Don't let the past haunt you. And then some people are afraid of the present. God's got a calling on your life. God's got an idea he's put in your spirit. God's got a plan that he wants you and only you to work out. But you are paralyzed in the present. And you analyze and analyze and analyze and analyze until your analyzing makes you paralyzed and you can't make a decision. A donkey is tied between two bales of hay. The rope is long enough to reach one bale at a time but not both bales at once. And so the donkey stands there hopelessly confused, frustrated, and dies of starvation because he can't make a decision of which bale to eat first. He could eat both of them if he just decide. Now you ought to have more sense than a donkey. I wish I had some noise here. You ought to be smarter than a jackass. God has given you ability. God has given you resources. God has given you people in your life to help you with your vision and you are paralyzed and can't move forward. Yesterday is a canceled check. Tomorrow is a promissory note. Today is cash in your hand. What are you afraid of? And then some folk are finally afraid of the future. We live in a world now where everything, everything is a crisis. A health care crisis. An economic crisis. A jobs crisis, a crime crisis, a stock market crisis, a terrorism crisis, and we are huddled around the TV and changing channels on the radio to get the news of what the market is doing and what Wall Street is saying and what the president is going to do and what Congress is going to do. Black folk ain't never been highly invested on Wall Street. We didn't even know it was a depression in 1929. Because God has always carried us. I wish I had some help right here. God has always opened doors for us. God has always made a way for us. That's why our worship is different from their worship. Come on, help me if you can. That's why our preaching is different from their preaching because we know a God who can pick you up, turn you around, place your feet, on solid ground. The stock market, the, the economy don't bother us. We can eat neck bone. Pig's feet. Backbone stew. Come on, help me here. Black folk can make a meal out of anything and make it taste good because the God of our foreparents Help us when we couldn't keep ourselves. 
Go on with your dream. Go on and work out your plans. Go on and see your vision to its final conclusion. God is on your side. You don't have to have five talents. Use the one you have. You don't have to have two talents. Use the one you have. I'm getting happy now. Because you don't have to try to live like somebody else lived. Have I got a witness here? It just may be a two-bedroom apartment. But the Lord gave it to you. A piece of job is better than no job. Try to make a dollar out of 15 cents. Thank God that he woke you up and gave you health and strength to go and get it on your own. And if you work out with what you have, God will multiply it. I wish I had somebody to help me here. Uh, uh, take your one talent and don't bury it. Don't, 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 don't put it in the ground. Don't hide your gift. They, they may not give you a chance to use it at Lily Grove. But Lily Grove ain't the only place you can use your gift. They may not even appreciate it in your church school class. But it's not their dream. It's your dream. It's not their goal. It's your goal. It's not their vision. It's your vision. And you are the only one who can bring it to pass. Because when it's all over, the Lord ain't going to bless me for being Ralph West. I wish I had one or two more witnesses. The Lord's not going to pat me on the back for being Marcus Cosby. But the Lord's going to shake my hand for being Terry Anderson. Because that's something I want to hear him say. I wish I had somebody to help me close it. I have preached in great pulpits across this country. My name has been sung in pulpits across this nation. But I, that's not what I want to hear. I wish I had somebody to help me close it. Uh, I, I've been inducted into the Martin Luther King Board of Preachers. President of Morehouse College shook my hand and told me congratulations. But that's not what I want to hear. I wish I had somebody to help me. There's no place I can go in Houston that people don't recognize me from my television broadcast and see how much they enjoy a call to joy, but that's not what I want to hear. I was on vacation. I stopped at a gas station in Baytown, and the lady said, that's all you want? I said, yes, ma'am, that's all. She said, speak one more time. I said, ma'am, she says, speak one more time. I said, what do you mean? She said, I recognize that voice anywhere. You're Terry Anderson. I listened to you on 1360, A Call to Joy. You are a blessing to the body of Christ. But that's not what I want to hear. One of these days, I said, that's not what I want to hear. My daughter calls me daddy, but that's not what I want to hear. Y'all call me pastor, but that's not what I want to hear. I'm teaching my grandbaby to call me granddaddy, and I can't wait to hear that. But that's not what I want to hear. When the battle is over, when I lay my burdens down, when I get through with life's fitful fever, I want to hear him say, Servant. Servant. Well done. You've been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter now into your master's joy. Now you think we're having a good time here tonight? I say you think we're having a good time here tonight? Just as soon as my feet strike down, I'm going to lay down my heavy burden. And I'm going to tell the Lord how you treated me. I was up sometime. Laughed at sometime. I had to cry sometime. But I can't wait to hear him say, Servant, 
well done. Well done. And in order for you to hear well done, you have to have done well. I wish I had the body to help me. Don't worry about who likes you. Don't worry about who's not going along with your plan. Don't worry about who doesn't appreciate your hallelujah. God gave you a talent. God gave you a gift. Use it to his glory. Use it to his honor. Because if you use it right, God will take from those who have and put it in your hand. Now listen, if you don't want to do nothing with what God gave you, give it to me. If you don't want to do anything with your hallelujah, I'll take it from you. If you're not appreciative of your blessing, give it to me. Because I know how to praise God. I knew how to praise God when I didn't have a car. So I sure enough know how to praise God with two Mercedes in the garage. I knew how to praise God in a shotgun house. I sure enough know how to praise God with 4,500 square feet. If you don't want to praise him, then get out of my way. Because I've come here tonight to tell God thank you for the talent you gave me. Is there anybody here want to take a minute now to tell God thank you for the gifts you gave me. Thank you for the wife you gave me. Thank you for the children you gave me. Thank you for the joy. The joy. The joy you gave me. This joy that I have the world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. Why don't you grab somebody? Tell them I'm going to use what God gave me. I'm going to sing when the Spirit says sing. I'm going to shout when the Spirit says shout. If the Lord opened doors for you, help me praise his name. If the Lord been good to you, help me give him the glory. Why don't you grab your praise partner and tell him one good thing, just one good thing that God has already done in your life. Don't keep it a secret. Thank you for tuning in to A Call to Joy. It is our prayer that the word of God has brought joy, strength, and faith to your life. We would love to have you as our guest at Lily Grove Missionary Baptist Church where we are exalting the Savior, equipping the saints, and evangelizing the sinner. For your convenience, we have a 7.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. worship service every Sunday morning and 7 p.m. on Tuesday nights. Lily Grove is located at 7034 Till Wester Street, Houston, Texas, 77021, or feel free to visit our website at www.lilygrove.org. Until next week, God has called us to a life of joy. <laughs>